All right, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a short, and I'm just going to run you through the exact steps that is needed, not all the other things that Adobe Premiere can do because it's super vast. And I use it in a very basic way, and I've created plenty of videos, so let me show you how I do that. So first thing, you're going to go to File, New Project, and that's going to actually be in the front display screen. But when you create a new project, it'll bring you to here. And probably the next thing is just make sure we're looking at the same thing. You could use Starter, but I'm going to use Essentials. And you'll see that each one of these changes around uh, the layout. So pretty simple. You got your import stuff over here. You got your timeline here. Uh, I'm not going to get into, again, very advanced controls. I'll just show them as I go so that you can get up and rolling quickly. So I'm going to import some media to work with. I'm going to go to my downloads folder here. I'm going to use a two files. So I exported a MP4 from a software that I used to draw in. Uh, things like Procreate, Clip Studio Paint, I'll do this, probably lots more. So I got an MP4 file. It's already to the scale that I want. And that's basically a 9 by 16 but flipped up on its side. Another way to look at it, more popular way to look at it is 1920 by 1080 wide. So 1920 uh, vertically. Same thing with the image file. Uh, seems a bit redundant, but I'll show you why I do that. And so now I can click and drag this into the timeline. It's going to automatically set the sequence settings to that scale. You can check that by going to sequence settings. You see there it is. And actually, oh, it's a little bit off. Glad I checked that. Let's make it exact, 1920 by 1080. Just because when you upload to things like uh, maybe a TikTok video or uh, YouTube Shorts or uh, Instagram Reels, they, they all you know kind of favor this uh, this size and scale. So it's a 9 by 16 scale. You know, keep in mind too that a lot of this stuff, once you get it right, you'll sort of uh, default to it. So I'm going to scrub through this and see what I got here. See if there's any noticeable blips, bleeps, you know, things that are distracting. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the only thing is it's too long. So what I'm going to do first is adjust my speed. And I'm going to click on this, right click here, go to speed duration. Uh, I could see that it's at 358, something, 359, I don't know what it's at, right about there. So I'm going to start with a 300% increase and bring the... Uh, timeline, uh, I can't remember what the, you call this thing, a little marker, but I'm going to go to the end of that, and I'm at 119, so a little, little bit more, right click, speed duration, uh, and I'll just bump this up to, let's try 350, there we go, almost there, probably a better way to do this, but showing you exactly how I, how I do it, and it doesn't take long, so I just, sometimes you get lucky and get it right on the first try, you could do the math and really know where you're at. But I like to just do this. And so right at the end of that marker, almost there. And I actually want to give myself a little bit of a buffer. So I'm going to go like 420. And yeah, it gives me a little bit of a buffer. And the reason why I want that is, you know, you're going to do certain things to cut and, and maneuver. And again, I'm going to keep this super simple, but hopefully it'll get, get you up and rolling uh, more quickly because of that, you know, as I said before. So I'm going to go to the front of this. Certain times I will do a right click apply default transition. Now you can zoom in with the plus and minus. So as I hit minus on the keyboard, I'm zooming out, plus I'm zooming in. So the neat thing about this, you can control your duration of your cross dissolve here. You can also grab it and see how it highlights, and you can drag that back and forth, and you'll see it visually change up here under effects control. So you know, pick something you want there. There's times I actually leave that out especially on something like TikTok where it sort of replays, well, I kind of like not having that there. And so certain ones where it stops the video or slowly brings in the video and then fades out, that looks better on certain platforms, in which case you will, will want to use Cross Dissolve or something like that and it play around with the duration. But if it's something like TikTok where it replays, I actually like it to go right from this image to the front and back, so sort of loops, um, I don't know, I just think that looks better. So it's up to you, things like that. Uh, we've got the speed that we want. Now what I'll do is grab the image file, file, import. Bring in the image file, there it is. And I'm gonna drag that right to here and I'm gonna put that on the top timeline. Now keep in mind, everything up here is your video, everything down here is your audio, right, pretty easy. So if you wanna bring audio in here, 
it's sort of different for different platforms. TikTok, Instagram, you can pull right from their audio, so you're just gonna export your video file here. Uh, but if you want uh, audio on YouTube, you go there and you go to their audio library, pre-download it, check the rights, import it into here, and uh, you know that's how you're gonna you're gonna make one. I'll, I'll do it that way just because it's going to explain um, you know both scenarios. I guess the other one you're just going to import into TikTok and IG Reels, and you're gonna pick your your songs there. So essentially, with this, you see the the art file is much larger. But as far as this part, you just right click here and go to oh, where are you? Scale to frame size, and it's gonna jump that down right to that size. So now the trick here, if you know, if you could even call it a trick essentially, is that if you want it to blend in nicely, just take this and overlap the footage, right click here, apply default transition, make sure that it doesn't pass the, uh, the file here, the underlying video file, because it'll fade out to the background, which can sometimes look a little bit weird, but this should fade pretty simply. It really, it's, it's not much of anything because all it really is doing is taking what was pretty much already there, still moving a little bit as far as zoom in so you can see. I'm using the scroll mouse wheel, by the way, right there to zoom in. And so you see it's just adding those highlights and then it fades. The only thing that really fades in, I like to sign my, my work at the bottom. And you can fade in all sorts of stuff with other features on your timeline, like maybe a link to your other media, your website, whatever you want to do. So there's that. The only thing I would probably say, it'd probably look better to have this go from large to small, not just do a simple fade in like that, even though I do like just having a hold at the back, because again, once it stops here, let's make sure this is shy of the one minute mark. Let's go a little bit more. You can also hit C, which allows you to crop wherever you want and select with this tool here, the selection tool, and then delete that. And so now we're sub, you know, right under that one minute. I'll probably go a little bit further. Hit C, crop that. Another way is just hit W on the keyboard and it crops everything from the right of the marker here. Um, and then Q crops everything from the left of the marker. So if you go here and hit Q, it crops and moves it over. All right, so let's make sure I'm right to the very end. Yeah, 59. I don't know, I just like having a little bit of wiggle room at the, the end there, probably a little bit more even. All right, I'm done. Okay, so there's that. Got that little bit of extra at the end. And I could pull this further, I mean, but I'm gonna start to lose some of my footage. So I wanna also speed this up to, you know, sort of counterbalance that, right? I don't wanna lose a whole lot of what's being uh, shown here in the video. So if I go to like, say 440, drop that back. Now I can pull this back over. And I'm not worried about going over that, that uh, one minute mark. I've got plenty of buffer. So, one last thing I'll show you, and then I'll bring in some audio, is it basically, uh, you know, it's going to look a little bit better to scale this up first and then blend it back or, you know, have a transition of some kind. It's real easy to do this. I can use it uh, scale here by just clicking on. Now, remember, you got to be on the actual footage, right? So in this case, just that still frame. I'm on it. I go up here. I click scale. This is a setting the keyframes, uh, you know, auto record, basically. So now if I scale this up from the start, so we'll say right about here, I'm gonna click and delete that keyframe because I want it to start right here. I'm gonna slide it over. And I can't see it because of that uh, cross dissolve, so I'm gonna delete that so I can see what I'm doing. And you see now it's much larger, and that's what I wanted. I can, I'll put the cross dissolve back. But then by, it gets, by the time it gets to about here, I want it to be, back to 100, uh, I believe it was 100, right? Let's check it, 100. Nope, it was less than that, what was it? Now make sure that as you're doing this, we got this auto key set, you gotta make all your changes before you move this marker or it's gonna mess it up. Uh, I don't know what it was at, what was it? not 50. It kinda seems like it would have been at 100, but I don't know what I'm getting wrong here, but there we go, something like that. So now keep in mind with these keyframes that if you move this, you can kind of zoom in and out, but this one's pretty far to the front of the footage. But anyways, if you move these, you can speed things up. You can also right click and change the way that the it flows in and out through Bezier curves. I'm not gonna get into all that, but essentially just know this is a visual representation of the speed. And yeah, you can, you can maneuver this, you can do some fun stuff in there, but I'm gonna 
just check this now with a playback. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna put back in that default transition, that fade. See how it blends in nice and slow, then it holds, and then it stops. Now again, if this was, we'll say YouTube, I would probably fade this out, and I want a certain amount of hold in between so that it gives the viewer time to sort of see it, right? So again, that's why I like having this buffer, because if these cross fades are, or fade dissolves, whatever they're called, if they're a little too encroached, I still have room to pull this out just a little bit, and you don't need much for timing. Like it's, you know, it's just that little bit of hold there, so it's not too fast and distracting. So that works. Again, I wouldn't use these if it was something like a TikTok, but I will use them in this case. Now notice here that because it comes in, it, it jumps right off that image. It's almost like, well, why keep it? I should either crop right to here or place a hold here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and eliminate that fade in. I don't think it's necessary here. You'll get that split second where you see it. That obviously could even be a little bit longer. Uh, you know what? And I'll just make that a little bit longer real quick while we're here just to show you. Because this is, this is how editing goes, right? It's like you could do a little bit less, but you generally probably want to do a little bit more and, and make it... Uh, I don't know if I'd want to do that fade in twice. So I'm going to click here. There we go. I don't know why it wasn't giving me that. I'm just going to highlight these keyframes, hit delete. And now it's just that flat image. And I'm going to bring that right to about here. Let's see if that works. Fade in right to there. Yeah, I think that actually works pretty good. I actually don't mind the fade now, or the fade in. Uh, so now let's go to the back, make sure we didn't go over our time. Now we're still under just a little bit. That's good. I mean, that's still a, that's still a short uh, video. So there we go. So now we've got the video. I'll do the playback and show you one other thing that's kind of neat. You can grab anywhere in here and move these around. I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel here. And actually, I don't even need to do that. What I'm going to do is click play after I hit uh, control and the tilde key, I believe it's called. And it gives you a, a, you know, kind of a full screen. I'll just play it back real quick. Kind of check everything out. Yeah, I'm digging that. So... I won't make you watch the whole thing. It's, you know, it'll just eat up more time. But you know, you could scrub through it. You could play back at a faster speed. I'm mainly concerned about the transitions, just like that. So now I'm going to go into the audio library and download something from uh, YouTube and show you how we can add an audio file and export this out. Okay, so now I'm inside of Creator Music Beta. I don't know why it's been beta forever, but uh, I don't grab stuff from here. I, every time you go here and you read the usage rights. They're just, I don't know, they seem a little suspect. So I go all the way down to here and then right here. And so in here you can grab stuff that seems to be more free, actually free, I don't know. It seems like this is the way it used to be. Uh, so maybe I'm just old school. But anyways, always check this. It's always changing. You're probably going to watch this video. It's going to look different. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Nature of the beast. They change this stuff all the time. But here I can pick something that sort of goes with uh, what I'm looking for. A lot of times I'll just go like, I mean, this is all subjective, right? But I'll just go something like uh, techno or something. You know, it's a fast kind of drawing video. I don't know. You guys could tell me, like, dude, you shouldn't be picking techno. Or, I mean, I tend to like cinematic stuff. I want the duration to be over the one minute at least. Beast mode sounds cool. Yeah, I'm good with that. I mean, you know, you can really kind of get lost in all this and find some really deep, cool stuff. I'm just going to go with this one. And I'll make sure to link to uh, Beast Mode inside the uh, the video, which I don't do all the time. But I don't. in fact, with this one, I don't even think you have to. I don't see anywhere where it says you do. Uh, but, you know, if I can help them out, that's, that's awesome. So let's go back into Premiere. So now we can drop this soundtrack in here with File Import. There it is under Downloads, Import. We can click and drag this down to the audio timeline. Zoom in a bit. And I will chop the front of it, get rid of this little bit of an intro. I want to get right to the music because this is a pretty short video. Yeah, it's kind of intense. I like that. Now, a lot of times I will right click and I will adjust the gain up or down. 
In this case, I'm gonna go minus five. I don't mind that. And so I will, keep in mind, if you're doing narrations, a lot of times I will bring in a background audio. I'll drop this like minus 10, 15, it depends on the audio, uh, decibels. So again, right click audio gain, you can go up or down. And it also saves what you did. So each time you add another negative variable or positive, it's going to adjust up or down based on what you already had. So a lot of times with voice audio, I do a plus 12 here. With imported audio here, I do a minus five. And then again, if it's with narration, I do like a minus 15, minus 20. So where it's a real light in the background. So you wanna play around with those things uh, and you're gonna have timelines for each obviously. But yeah, so something like this. And then what I'll do is at the very end, I will check sort of where it ends up. And sometimes I might move this audio back and forth to really get what I'm after, but I don't want to bore you too much. I'm just going to put a fade at the end of this. Default transition. And you can soften up this fade by dragging this out. And there we go. So now we're ready to export. I'll check the beginning one more time. I like that. I like the intensity. It's kind of comic booky, and this is comic booky art. So essentially, I've got everything scaled, audio, video, fades, things like that. I know it's super simple, but it gets you up and running. And that's really what my goal was. And it still ended up, ended up being a longer video. I don't know how people make these short videos about this stuff, but uh, there it is. I, you know, um, and, and now it's export time, right? Ready to upload it and share it with the world. So I would go to File, Export, Media. And then what I use is H.265. I find it to be the best format for everything that I'm doing. Uh, I make sure that my all my numbers are right here. And, and remember that over time, you're going to get really used to seeing certain numeric values, and it's just going to make more sense. I don't know a ton about this software. I just know what works. And then I export that. Now, the beauty of shorts, they export faster. They're file, uh, smaller file sizes. But keep in mind, as you get into larger video file formats, 4K, longer content, you're going to want to use something like Handbrake. Handbrake is an open source software. Not paid to say this. It's, it's open source. It's a great program. And it compresses really well for video. So I use that a lot. Um, but I won't use it for shorts because they're just smaller in size generally. And there you go. So the video is exported. You save that to... Uh, your hard drive where you want, you upload it, and uh, you get YouTube famous. It's really not that simple, but it'll get you started. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, more content on the way soon. Good luck with your art, and bye for now.